communication solves all problems. Communication creates all reality. Join Edwin Frondozo on the Business Leadership Podcast every week for a unique program featuring insights and actionable items from the world's most successful business leaders. Hear firsthand the exclusive interviews and personal journeys on how today's transformational leaders made it to the top. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever, wherever you're tuning in. I am super uber excited to share this episode with Marcos Mendoza. First off, he's the co-founder of Coachable, a coach's business development agency. He is an artpreneur, and we'll get more into that. But basically, it's someone who has a passion for poetry, writing, and teaching sales. And he's built a reputation as the go-to source for learning how to use communication as a superpower. But really, aside from that, there's a backstory with Marcos and myself. We actually first met in back in 2016 when I was hosting a number of startup weekend events in Toronto. There was one particular one. This one was pretty big. We had over 100 people attend. And basically, if you never heard of startup weekends, it's a 54-hour weekend to pitch an idea, build a team, and present to a panel of successful startup founders and investors. And Marcos was there and he pitched. And I clearly remember his pitch. And it was just amazing. It was just amazing now to see where he started with a pitch. Fast forward six years where we reconnect on this podcast. Was he's grown so much immensely in terms of understanding his value, how to pitch, and basically who he is as an entrepreneur and how he's built up his business. We actually recorded this episode one week prior to the Speaker Slam event in Toronto. It was an event called The Comeback. It was Speaker Slam's first in real life person since the pandemic. And we were competing as the top 10 finalists. Suffice to say, Marcos, amazing, amazing speaker. He won that competition. It was amazing. You need to check it out. I'll put a link on it, but it was called Am I? Without further ado, this is a long time coming. I'm happy to share this conversation. And this episode is brought to you by Slingshot Communication. It's the business leaders preferred cloud phone service. But here we go. Welcome to the Business Leadership Podcast, Marcos. Well, thank you for having me. Oh my God. You know what, Marcos? This is a long time coming. I'm like super pumped, super honored, super excited to just share this time with you. And for the listeners out there, and I don't know if Marcos will remember this, the first time I met you, Marcos, was at a startup weekend. You came with a friend of ours, Teresa. She, I had invited her to do the to do out in the opening night to do the keynote talk, and and you were there. You came and you pitched an idea. This was probably like maybe like seven years ago. It's a while ago, <laughs> but that was the first time I met you. I'm like, yo, this guy is cool, man. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, to have you on this on on the podcast. Just just to really just just to geek out and just chat. So thank you, thank you. I remember it. That's cool, man. <laughs> That's uh, so. I was waiting for I was waiting for this call to tell you and share my first experience with you. But I remember that you were a good, you know, just the energy you had and the excitement you had, and and you were, you know, you shared common friends with me who I respect. Um, so it, it's been interesting to see your journey um, where you are today. And I guess for those who may have not. Heard, uh, you know, who may just be learning of you, Marcos, just share who you are and what you enjoy doing when you're not growing, when you're not leading businesses or leaders in in, uh, in today. So I'm an entrepreneur, which is a term that I coined um, that has taken me a, a lifetime, uh, you know, of, of discovering. I've always felt out of place with regards to my identity inside of how to stop suffering from the identity crisis of being an entrepreneur and an artist. 
with a passion for being an artist that spans uh, as a 20 year career writing music, 20 years of playing, you know, the piano, of, of making music, of being a poet, a spoken word artist, a lyricist, 20 years inside of that obsession, you know, there's always this longing that existed around how can I just make a living doing this, this passion with words and music without um, selling my soul, quote unquote, to the powers that be that are going to have me change my artistic and creative power um, in a way that uh, will have me live inauthentically about what I'm creating. And and how do I make a lot of money and produce a lot of impact and feel ex the you know, security, fulfillment and freedom for wellness to exist? How do I have all of this? And it's taken me 20 years to figure it out. And I found it through this identity, um, which is called an entrepreneur, which is great because it sounds a lot like entrepreneur. But being an entrepreneur is someone that um, uses their creativity and their artist, their artistic intentions at the forefront of how they innovate, produce, and serve. So in my case, my primary product model is called profit and worth. And profit and worth is essentially a prescription-based teaching model that teaches entrepreneurs how to build their self-worth while simultaneously building their, their products and their programs. And I teach using music, spoken word, space holding, and then all of these different modalities like breath work, visualization, guided meditations, affirmations, and, uh, and, and theory. So, you know, being an entrepreneur, it's like I get to now, instead of just teaching lectures, I'm teaching through spoken word. I'm teaching through these modalities that help people kind of, um, they help people experience the feeling of being touched, moved, and inspired as they learn so that they're not being, you know, lectured, but rather they're being enrolled into the experience of learning, which is one of my passions is passions and purpose is to be a teacher. So I would say that I'm an entrepreneur that has learned how to make a living of wonderful living, um, doing what he loves most, which is blending music and words into the purpose of teaching. Yeah, no, that's great. And it's such an inspiration, um, being an entrepreneur. And, and, you know, as you were explaining your 20 year journey, I totally could relate in terms of, you know, being full of integrity or, you know, not losing yourself, not selling out not identifying to where people are like, oh no, you just got to do this to get there and do these. And, and I, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of things that you mentioned really hit home for me, especially because, you know, I have a tech business, but I bootstrap because I didn't want to just go for the quick. I want to do it my way, right? I did a podcast and do things. So I really appreciate that. I may have to say, oh, I'm an entrepreneur like my boy Marcos. Um, but but it's uh that that's a great that's a great term and I love that I I really do love that. Um, I wanted to I guess ask you because as we were you know doing some of our research as I looked in you know we talk about you know our passions and stuff that we love, but you know you have um you have purpose and I think I've read somewhere where where you may have mentioned you know why you believe purpose work is it's, it's actually not enough. Like, I'd like to dig into that. Like, what do you mean by that? So, you know, I find that whenever somebody gets conflicted in conversation with me about what their life's about what the purpose of life is, I always attempt to mm -hmm. keep it as simple as possible and say the purpose of the purpose of life is to have life be lived. So the purpose of life is to live. And whatever that yeah. looks like for you is determined by the things that keep you inside of the spectrum of an emotional guidance system that ranges from the ultimate experience of happiness and joy to the lowest experience of fear, you know, and, and anger and hate. And like the, the purpose of life is to live and find a balance between what you can create as an experience that fulfills your experience of life so that you realize that in the purpose of living, what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to live inside of that experience. You can then embody the knowing that you have enough self-certainty that at the core of anything and everything that you do in life, the purpose of your life is to find a way to just live it. That's baseline foundational principle, philosophy, and theory. From there, you'll realize that this isn't enough. <laughs> you'll be like, I got to find something else. There's got to be more. 
And it's funny because people, they treat this word, I always say this, I'm sorry to say this, but the, the, the self-development industry has turned the word purpose into like the slut of the, of the industry. You know, it's like everything's purpose. Everybody uses it. Everybody abuses purpose, purpose. You know, I find that there's so much more than just purpose to why we exist. And even though the purpose of life is to live, which can seemingly be the ultimate reason, the ultimate baseline foundation for all things, I feel like humanity has overcomplicated their purpose. And I find that for me, as an example, I get to experience things like my why is related to three primary things that I reach for in my life every single day, which is security, fulfillment, and wellness. So I'm constantly striving to experience security, fulfillment, and wellness. So why do I do anything that I do for the purpose of security, fulfillment, and wellness, right? So there's a way to unpack what purpose can be. And when you unpack it and get to the core of like what actually fulfills your experience inside of life, you may realize that you can have your purpose as a foundational base, which is the purpose of my life is to live. And then put that aside and say, I get that. That's a core principle. That's a core value of my life, that my purpose is to live. And then from there, start to stack on that and create other ways of being that help you think beyond just, you know, what is your life's purpose, but think more so in regards to what really fills your cup, what brings you joy, what triggers you, what activates you, you know, and there's just so many different things that you can embody and take on beyond just thinking purpose. Yeah. And, (laughs) and I love, I love how you said it's a dirty word because from your explanation, purpose is to live. So with knowing that I could just wake up every day and do nothing and I'm fulfilling my purpose. Like I didn't have to take any personal development thing to even tell me that. But what you're telling me is no, okay, we all have this common goal of living our life purposefully, but that comes to these pillars that, you know, what are those that create the fulfillment or, or what serves you or what's connecting to your core to serve and to create impact, right? So I I never thought of it that way, Marcos. It, it it's it's actually pretty true, and it's kind of like, hey man, we all have this purpose, and it's it's actually all the same, guys. So um, sorry sorry to for for any purpose driven industry company or someone who's saying, but it's it's just another a uh, lens, another uh, <laughs> mind frame to mindset to look the, the, that through. So I do I, I do, <laughs> yeah. So imagine living a life where you discover that waking up every day on purpose wasn't fulfilling enough for you. What do you do when purpose is no longer the catalyst to why you get up and do the work that you do? What's left? Well, infinity is left. So we created this word and we, we, we associate this meaning to this word. And what happens to all the people that they feel so stuck with like, I don't know my life's purpose. Does that mean that I have no value or I have these ideas to change the world, but I'm not really clear on the purpose of it. I just want to change the world. Does that mean that I can't do it? So I really want to stand for people to realize that there's more than purpose and that purpose isn't the be all end all to why you have value and why your self-worth is valued. There's more to it than purpose and it can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, that's great. And there's something Marcos that you and I, um, have in common. Um, I'm like a student of communication. I, I'm always curious um, to understand how I could effectively deliver my message, how I could listen to my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, and really understand what she's trying to say to me. Um, how you know, you know, how I could communicate with my wife, and I know that you're super passionate about learning, you know, to 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 use communication effectively. So. Why do you think it's it's really the best way, the most productive way to to be and to create flow? So communication solves all problems. 
Communication creates all reality. And there are so many ways to unpack that. The creation of reality, we're literally communicating through energetic experiences, ethereal experiences, psychic experiences, intuitive communication. Communication is an ongoing act of symbolism that is being expressed, created, interpreted, received. And we're communicating intention, ideas, like communication is the creator of reality. And communication is the superpower that co-creates realities, solves problems, produces, innovates. It is through communication that human beings have access to infinite intelligence. That's what I believe. And that's why I teach communication as a superpower. Yeah. And, and when you talk about communication, Marcos, we're not – and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you're stopping as the spoken word or the the written word. You're talking about all levels of communication, the conscious, the subconscious, the different energies. Um, and this is something that you really encompass within your being – or your own personal practice. But from what I understand, it's also what you are teaching with your students or the people that you're working with to level up their, their business, right? All day, every day, all of that, you know, like it really does come down to using communication to design the existence of your life's experience based off of what you want and have become really good at that. You know, I think a lot of people, they don't understand that what, when we say, um, when we are thinking, we are communicating. When we are feeling, we are communicating. When we are in action, we are communicating. So what, what would your life look like if you learned to harness the technology of thought, feeling and action and started to use that as an opportunity for you to create, invent, unpack, discover, manifest a way of being that literally, actually, metaphysically has you design the experience of your waking, even your sleeping life, according to what you are communicating is real, feels good, and is in congruence or alignment with how you want to experience the design or the fabric of your life. Communication does that. So in teaching self-worth principles, business development principles, sales, authentic communication, sales, and ultimately teaching how to actualize an idea into a reality, using communication is at the core of how we actually intertwine those fabrics so that we can just have it all, however we communicate it to be true for us. Yeah, it... <laughs> What's coming to my mind when it comes to communications? Communications is also what you're talking to yourself, right? Because there's some listeners out there, myself included, when sometimes I need to, you know, communicate with myself to push me through those hard days, those struggles. When you know what? I know my vision. I understand my purpose. But you know what? Today... Tomorrow, this week, I don't feel like it. <laughs> like, like what, what? What? What would you say to me, right? Like, how do I communicate that? Or like, what type of practice should I be thinking about, right? Oh man, I love that question. Thank you for that because this has been coming up a lot uh, in my life, and I've learned that. So I'll give you an example. So whenever I'm about to do a workout, I consciously communicate in a way that removes all of the stories and reasons and feelings and ideas and memories of the act. And I just do it. So I'm communicating that I'm just doing this. Never have I worked out and said, Oh fuck. I really wish I didn't work out. Never. Right. So I know that I have a core value inside of fitness and well-being, wellness, health, 
activity, flexibility, stamina, agility. These things are things that are part of my core values, things that I celebrate, that I love, that I long for. So if I could remove the clutter from the decision-making process and just be in action and simply align, it's just a three-step process, really. This is the simplicity of communication, thought, feeling, action. Thought, feeling, action. The result of that, those, that thought, feeling, and action sequence is, is this in alignment with what fulfills me? Is this in alignment with what helps me feel secure? Is this in alignment with my wellness? So for example, my reason for doing anything is security, fulfillment, and wellness. Thought, feeling, and action. Thought, got to work out. Feeling, feels good. Action, go do it. Shut the fuck up. Just do it. (laughs) That's it. It's like, stop complicating. I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. I don't have time. All of that is just stories and noise and clutter. And it does the most, it does one thing that is so powerful, which for example, for me is my core value on a day-to-day basis is do I have integrity? So if I am thinking, feeling, and acting in congruence with what labels or defines my life's integrity, then my life becomes the manifestation of every mo- every beautiful experience that I've ever wanted to have. But if I lack integrity because it's a core value, then my life becomes a fucking shit show, right? So to communicate simply, remove the noise, the clutter, the stories, the reasons, and just be in action by using your thought, which is I'm doing this, the feeling, this is good for me, and the action, a workout. If you already know that you can celebrate the experience of that afterwards and you've already celebrated it in the past, then by you not doing it, by you not keeping it simple, by you deciding not to do it, you're still not wrong if you have enough discipline to know that you can communicate that you're not wrong. But most people make themselves wrong. So who cares if you don't work out? Just don't make yourself wrong about it. Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) I love that. You know, so I'm a runner. I love running. I've run a number of marathons. And, you know, there are times you're like, oh, I don't want to run, but I do what you mentioned. I just do it, <laughs> do it. And the best part is when you do it and it's raining, I'll tell you what, it's the best. I've, I've posted this on social media tons of times when I run, when it's rain, it's like the most satisfying action that you could do because there are countless reasons why you could have given yourself an excuse not to run. <laughs> you can say, oh, it's running outside. I didn't want to do it anyways. You know what? Whatever. I'm going to go back to work. But when you do it and you feel it and you and you enjoy it, you are, like you said, you are living a purposeful life, right? You're fulfilling because it's in alignment to who you identify or what you want to show up in life. So I do appreciate that. I mean, that, like that, that was great. Um, I actually did that yesterday. So yesterday I built a little gym on my... I have like a sunset deck, um, high above trees surrounding me. And I knew it was going to thunderstorm. And I was like, I'm going to go work out because I can't wait to work out during the storm. Right. So yeah, I could have very easily, if I overthought it, I could have just said, nah, fuck it. You know, I'll go inside or whatever. Or I avoided it or I don't feel like it. But no, it's like I started my work and I'm literally like sitting there like on the bench you know, nice. my shoulders watching the storm come in. And I, <laughs> I was like, yo, I wish I was filming this. Like, this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And it started pouring like wind, rain. Like it was so cinematic. And I actually felt proud. I was like, fuck yeah. Rain on me. Rain on it was me. The be- it was the best workout ever, right? You know, it's like you in the element, you know, and it's like, yeah. what got in your way? Nothing. I have integrity, period. I love it, man. I love it. Um, I just wanted to, I just want to dig deep into, into your, the way you work. You know, I know, I know, I know you're, you're an advocate of like, <laughs> you're an advocate of like the one hour work week or the, um, how does that work? One hour, sorry, one hour work day. Like, how does that work? How do you schedule it? This is, you know, this is selfish for me because I'm always looking to update my life, update my processes, but also for those who are out there listening, 
who are like, man, I do 60 hour weeks, man. I don't even know what this guy's smoking. Like, how does he get there? Okay. So disclaimer, the one hour workday was designed for severely ADD people like me, ADD, ADHD, severely creative, distracted, innovative ideologists that cannot stop creating. That's who it was made for. Okay. Now I don't do the one hour workday every day anymore because I found that I actually really love the projects that I have in my space right now. But at the time when I was battling fatigue, burnout, and all these different experiences of like, just not feeling that same entrepreneurial drive. I went through a separation with my fiance. I moved to Costa Rica. I moved back to Canada. Like I had a lot of stuff going on, but I still had a business to run. I had a dozen clients in my space. I had a lot that I had to remain in integrity to. I had to develop a system where I didn't make myself wrong and where I didn't overexert myself, but still have the integrity to my responsibilities. So I created the one hour work day. How does it work? Well, the reality is this. Most online entrepreneurs in the coaching space, and I specialize in coaching, so um, I teach coaches. So most of the people in our industry, the truth is, here's what they're doing. They're fucking scrolling all day. They're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, okay? And they stop, they pee, they stop, they <laughs> They stop, they write, they stop, they make a video. The behaviors for most of the people in our industry literally look like this. Create compelling content, build organic relationships, nurture those relationships, research and development, and maybe serve some clients. Those are the five steps. So for the people in our space, you can do all of that in one hour and then have the rest of the day off. Because the reality is that the shelf life of your posts is like maximum three minutes. But that one post, because you usually only have capacity for marketing, which people consider posting as marketing. Yeah. If that's all you got, then the quality of the post is obviously going to determine the impact of it. But if your life is about posting, scrolling, nurturing relationships, working on your program and serving your clients. That's literally the formula that these people are practicing inside of this industry to keep it at a startup phase. Mm -hmm. The more you show up, the more popular you become, the more in integrity you are, the more likely you will contend to continue to generate a system of momentum that's going to accumulate, right? So having an online business that's not Amazon or Etsy, but having an online business that is Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, the whole purpose of it is for you to remain present to the impact that you give as a contribution to the market or the community that you serve. Once you've done your impact and contribution, you can scale back. And once you scale back, you can relax knowing that you were online enough, you did your inner work enough, you were integrity to your clients enough. Now, I broke down the one hour work there where it's like, how long does it take you to post, especially if you batch some content? If you batched your content well in advance, it takes you 10 seconds to post. If you automate your post using Planoly or later, then it takes you less than that. You literally just let it run, right? So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is having your coaching conversations. Maybe your session is 30 to 45 minutes. 30 to 45 minutes of a session, you served your one client if you have one client per day, and then you have 15 minutes to be able to Write some material. You're burnt out. You're going through fatigue. You're distracted. You're tired. You don't feel like working out. And then you make yourself wrong for not being as productive or as energized or as, as you know, efficient as you feel like you should be to keep up with the momentum of the hustle culture that's telling you that you need to be grinding 60 hours a week in order to be successful. Change the narrative. What is the, what is the measurement of success for you? If the measurement of success is a lot, a lot, a lot of money and you're far from that, then maybe the one hour work they won't for you won't work for you. But if the measurement of success is defined by fulfillment, security, and wellness, for example, do you feel safe in your body? Are you fulfilled with the little bit of work that you did today? Do you feel the security of knowing that you're in integrity to your word? If you define your success like that, then you can have a successful one hour day and take the rest of the day off to focus on what really matters. Things like wellness, rest, 
nutrition, play, joy, writing, creativity, things that are also adding to the definition of your success. So the one hour workday is definitely not for everybody, but for my clients who I tend to have a lot in common with, I seem to have cracked the code so that they can get away with having one hour workdays and feel less guilt about not being as quote unquote successful and learning how to define success by something that works for them. Yeah, I love that. And I love I love how it's in a it's in a measurement of one hour to understand that you're in your worth or you're in your integrity and you're producing and a lot and, and you're freeing up your time. And Marcos, you know this. A lot of people that you've worked with or spoke to or come into contact with is they say they want freedom. So this is it. Like why are you stuck doom scrolling all day when it should have just taken you, like you said, ten seconds <laughs> to post that one site and get off get off the phone and live your life. Live yeah. purposefully as well. Um <laughs> dude, you you're you're awesome. Um I'm curious, you know, as you moved away from your one hour work week and you're obviously doing different things and creation and doing stuff. What are you currently working on? What are you practicing that is up leveling yourself, your business or your life right now? So I have 75 soft that I started yesterday. So, you know, 75 hard. Yep. So, Teresa and I started 75 soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so we're actually doing 75 soft. Today is day two. She's actually blowing up my phone right now with like progress pics. Okay, I'm on day two. This is the food I'm just, eating. Just tell T that we're on a call right now. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I should tell her right now. Shout uh, out to T when she listens to this. <laughs> I should actually just film it right now. And then she'll be like, oh, shit. Here, watch. Yeah. All right. What's up, T? This is what's happening right now in real time. I know you're on day 275 soft. I'll be getting back to you real soon. You want to say something? 75 soft. I see you, T. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, 75 soft. You know, I started the 75 hard and I realized my body doesn't have the capacity for this. I don't have the capacity. I it's so ego it was so ego driven for me. It was so it was back to that old pattern of like, I gotta man up, uh, man, man up. Urgh. And I was like, this isn't me, man. Be gentle. Like I go yeah. so much further in the gentleness and the ease and the you know, I, I, I can get so much more done in being gentle. So I was like, all right, let's try 75 soft. That's number one. Um the second thing that I'm doing is I'm really prioritizing on learning how to just sit and do what I do. You know, I've been so nomadic for the last six years that sitting in one place to work is so hard. But I have this stellar setup here with all like, and I saw your keyboard. It's like, I got keyboards. I got MPC. I got MIDI controllers. Nice. I got, I got monitors. I got microphones. I got cameras. I got lights. I have everything here. And it's You're like, in the lab. I'm in the lab. It's like, dude, just sit down and just do the work. And it's like, I find myself journaling every morning about what I'm going to do. And I always end up leaving, like to go do it somewhere else. And then like, so I'm just learning right now, the discipline of sitting to just do what I got to do. Because the reality is, is that profit and worth is about 120 teaching materials. And all of them have a lesson that I wrote, an activity that I created, and then the recording of it using the mic and then the actual editing of it where I can either download royalty-free music or I can get on my MPC and my keyboard and make the music so that I can upload it to social media and not get copywritten. So a lot of the work behind the value of profit and worth is yes, in the teaching, the coaching and the holding space for people to have breakthroughs, but also in the media and the production of putting together the work. So my life right now is just consumed by sitting down to actually finish things that I've started, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm in a really good place with that because I experience security, fulfillment and wellness from knowing that I'm completing the things that I started. Yeah. And, and I know, I know one thing and you, you may share it, but we'll definitely put a post. I know, I know recently I saw that you had completed, uh, 
a meditation. Uh, Many, yeah. So a guided, I, but but I know you just released another one, I guess, a, another one, a guided meditation recently, and I was like, oh, I got to check this out for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of them. There's there's that. There's uh, there's twelve, twenty four, thirty six, forty. There's sixty. There's sixty guided meditations that I can share, and there's sixty mantras, and there's. Uh, 14 speeches and there's, you know, there's a lot of material inside profit and worth. Um, so it's exciting to be able to, again, be an entrepreneur. It's like people are trusting me to guide them through healing, expansion, growth, transformation, while also expanding on their vocabulary, communication and sales, right? So this is fulfillment for, for, for me. So I'm in a really good place. Yeah. You're creating, and I and I love it. It's an inspiration, and uh, and it's something that you know. I cleaned up my Instagram feeds and people who I follow to those who are really inspiring me, whether they're whether they're inspiring in a big way or, or just being fulfilled in creation and stuff like that. I I, I do really appreciate that, Marco. So you and I, like I said, you and I, maybe we're gonna have to do another round two one day. But you know, I'm really having having good time and really learning what it means to be an entrepreneur and really, you know, doing things that really fulfill you. But I'd love to get a final thought, observation. Ideally, what, what I try to do is get an actionable recommendation for those who are listening today who are really interested in what you're saying. And obviously, we will definitely put all of Marcos's resources in the show notes below. Uh, but yeah, what, what would you share to those who are listening today? Mm. You know, my superpower has, you know, it's, it's so, there's so much to say to this. So I'm going to remind you as you hear this is I'm going to remind you that when you decide on what is the core value that runs the show in your life, when you decide on what that is, what you get is you get a pillar that is a word that acts as a symbol, that acts as a meaning, that acts as a story. That one word, for me, it's integrity. It could be something else for you. That core value, your world, when you allow yourself to have your world revolve around the quality of living into that core value, embodying that core value. When you sprinkle that core value into everything that you do, your life becomes a manifestation of the result that that word is for you as a feeling or as an idea. So for me, integrity is the grandfather of discipline. Discipline is like the nephew, you know, um, integrity is like the grandfather of it all. It's like, my whole life revolves around having integrity. And because of that, I know that I use that core value to co-create every experience of my life so that in having integrity, I am feeling secure that I am congruent to the path that I'm on in my life. My invitation would be to decide, you know, people talk about core values, if you have the capacity for core values and the integrity to have them all work for you, then great. But if you don't have the capacity and you continue to show up in a way where you know your capacity is limited and your lack of capacity turns into self-sabotage, it's like take in less information. Just choose a, a recipe, a formula that works best for helping you experience what success is defined as for you and rinse and repeat that process because there's enough for you to explore, practice, hone, design for you to be able to use that one recipe for your own success, for you to create a masterful life. And keeping it simple is what mastery looks like. A master makes something really hard look simple. So that's how I would recommend that you go about your life starting today as a suggestion. That's super powerful, Marcos, and I, and I love that. I do really love that because some thought leaders, some people we, we look up to really have that plural around values, right? When when that could be overwhelming for those starting their journey 
in improvement and in self and personal development. Marcos, it's been an absolute pleasure. Can you let us know where we could find more information about you, your programs, or anything else you'd want to share with us today? Yeah, I always tell people, you know, I get interviewed all the time and I'm like, just text me six four seven four five five three three zero six with a one at the front um for Canada. Like just text me like this create a uh, direct contact again, you know, like you can follow me on Instagram and, you know, watch my life unfold. But when will you ever really message me to tell me, hey, I heard that podcast. Thank you. You know, I like to encourage direct communication. I feel safe in having the opportunity to someone to text me and be like, hey, I just heard, you, you know, the conversation with Edwin. And I just wanted to say, good job. That's dope. That's validation. That's fulfillment. That's connection. That's trust. That's rapport. You know, so let's. Let's just send a quick text to each other and we'll take it from there. Awesome. Definitely going to send out Marcos a text. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the Business Leadership Podcast. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. That's it, Biz Leaders. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Business Leadership Podcast. That was episode number 169 with Marcos Mendoza. One thing that really hit home for me was when he said communication solves all problems communication creates all reality i mean that is everything for me as a podcaster telecommunications entrepreneur you know a family man i am passionate about communications and i continually look how to better communicate myself to others so for more information about marcos his speeches his business or any other resources that we shared, go to thebusinessleadership.com slash 169. Of course, just click the show notes below and all the links are there. Please share this episode with three like-minded friends and tag me at 100x. I'd love to say hi. This episode was brought to you by Slingshot Communication, the business leader's preferred cloud phone service and what i like about the service is that i'm able to have my own business sms phone number in the past without it it was very difficult to separate my personal and work life when clients would be sending me a text message on my personal phone line but with slingshot i have my own business phone number that i can use to make and take not only phone calls but sms messages and during off hours and weekends, I don't reply. I don't even see it unless I want to. To learn more, go to thebusinessleadershop.com slash SMS. And by the way, if you haven't done so yet, please give the show a follow, leave a review, and a comment on your favorite podcast player. I really appreciate and I love hearing from you. Until next time. Do your best and have a 100x day. Thank you for listening to the Business Leadership Podcast at thebusinessleadership.com. Help me.